As he told us in his film Manhattan, Woody Allen adores New York City, but in the last few years has taken audiences on a cinematic tour of Europe. In Match Point and Scoop, he took us to England. In Vicky Cristina Barcelona, he showed us Spain. In Manai in Paris, he brought us to France. Now, Italy is on the horizon. The new film is called To Roam with Love, and here is the trailer. I'm from Roma. My job is to stand up here, and I see all people in Roma. All is a story. They gave us such a great room. You know, you married a very bright guy. I got a, I got 150, 160 IQ. You're figuring it in euros. In dollars, it's much less. Congratulations, because it's all paid. It's all yours. It's all for you. But look, it's not an error. I'm here to satisfy your dreams. I lived in Rome for a year when I was uh, your age. Ah. This might have been my exact street. Come on in. My girlfriend makes great espresso. My friend just broke up with her boyfriend. I told her she could stay with us. She's smart and funny. Men just adore her. I think it's because of the sexual vibe that she gives off. I always had a little yen for sleeping with a woman. And when I finally did it, it was incredible. She's something, isn't she? Michelangelo, Hi. this is my father. Nice to meet you. Without the unions, the worker would be ground into dust. The kids are communists, the father's a mortician, the mother run a leper colony. Un evento televisivo che noi siamo in grado di documentarvi in diretta dal primo all'ultimo gesto. Lavorare tutto il tempo sdraiati sulla schiena, non lo posso immaginare. Io sì. You're gonna screw your best friend's boyfriend. Does it really matter what the venue is? You will never understand women. That's been proven. Isn't it nice to be someplace of pleasure? No. The film is four vignettes. One stars Alec Baldwin, Jesse Eisenberg, Greta Gerwig, and Ellen Page. Another stars Penelope Cruz and Elizanda Tiberi. The third stars Roberto Benigni. The fourth stars Woody Allen, Judy Davis, and Alison Pill. It is Woody's first appearance since his last film, Scoop, in 2006. Here is that vignette. He's going to be a big star. Star! Big opera star. Non sai cantare. No, non sai cantare. I'm going to take care of him. Acqua, acqua. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 non so cantare. No, no. Yes, no. Insomma, lasciamo perdere. Oh, no, no, no. Hold it, hold it. Interpose yourself. Wait, wait. Wait, go ahead. She she probably won't stab a woman. Go ahead. Go. Calm. 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 Relax. Get Relax. No, 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 no. You have an attitude problem. Put the knife down. We're, this is going to be our, our mother-in-law head? Joining me now, four cast members, Alec Baldwin, Penelope Cruz, Greta Gerwig, and Ellen Page. Also, Woody's sister and longtime producer, Letty Aronson. I am pleased to have all of them at this table. Welcome. So, Letty, uh, what is all this about? Tell me where this is in Woody's journey. You mean going to Rome? Yes. Rome this is movie. very beautiful. Uh, the people who financed it are an Italian company. Yeah. And we always go someplace that Woody feels comfortable being for three months because we're there. We only shoot for seven weeks, but we're there for pre-production. So we're there a good ten weeks. Mm -hmm. um, a particular time of the year? Always in the summer because his whole family comes and the kids are off from school. So we always shoot in the summertime. And, uh, and Rome is beautiful. We had a great time there. Alec, this is your second film with second. Woody. What is it? Why do you say when Woody Allen calls, yes? I just think it's easier, I mean, aside from the whole history of his filmmaking career and his success, uh, you know, commercially and creatively, it's easier when you're with the writer, director, producer, you know, the guy that he, it's all one voice. Because mm -hmm. uh, movie making today, I think increasingly it's not one voice. It's uh, you have one person who's in control of everything creatively. And it's movies also about people. Because so many movies today are not about people; they're about uh, you know plots and devices and machinery and so forth. So uh, when you go do the thing with Woody, I feel like what I do is more at the fore and more important, really. Mm. And this is your what? My second film. Second, with yeah. Him. Yes. Uh, and, and which the first one you won an Academy Award. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there is an appeal to working with him for you too. It's incredible. It's so addictive. Yeah. Addictive. It's, I always want more because he shoots so fast. 
You know, both yeah. movies I've done with him. I did the first one in three and a half weeks, the second one in three weeks. It's never enough. I, it's my dream to make a movie with him in New York, you know, to really? see him shooting in New York. Oh. Or in Madrid, where or we in were Madrid. saying. <laughs> Come back to Madrid, Don Quixote. I, yeah, well, yeah. Javier had this great idea. I, I don't know why I told you, because I knew you were going to say it now. <laughs> <laughs> what is Javier's idea? Okay, let's give no, it to No, 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 let's let it, we have to think about it. We don't know. We don't, right. know. Yeah. we don't know. But it's a great idea. Yeah, it is a good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, Woody Allen. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, there's an attraction. He's a certain kind of director. Mm -hmm. He's a more than a director. He's, a, as Alex said, he's a filmmaker. Yeah, I mean, he's in. He's like one of the few auteurs we have making yeah. movies, and he's so special because he's like, you know, he came from comedy, and he's a comedy writer, and then he became a film auteur, and he combined mm -hmm. those two, and he's such a humanist, and I think that's not. That doesn't happen a lot right now. I feel like films are, you know, dominated by plots or machines or something. And he he also lets you go off script. Yeah, he did. Although that's that that's not. Um, it's really scary to go off scripts with him because he's my favorite writer. So I don't, I always felt mm -hmm. a little awkward about changing his words. And this experience for you, Ellen? I mean, it's been tr it's 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 actually quite surreal. You know, it's it's and when the opportunity even first popped up, I was just nervous and intimidated and sort of just went in and did my best to suppress all of those feelings and <laughs> hopefully hopefully um, manage. Yeah. Um, but working with him is incredible. And, and like Greta says, you have this this liberty and this and 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 this freedom. And I think uh, a lot of um, a lot of that comes just from the fact that the material is so incredible and there's such, you know. Okay, we have four vignettes here. Yes, we we'll do. We'll talk about them. You play John. He comes to Rome. Uh, there is Jack. <laughs> Pick the story up for me. Well, <clears throat> I think that, you know, when you have the suggestion of some things in a movie like this with Woody, you don't, you're never going to get Woody to point, point to it and go, yeah, that's it. I mean, it's like a, it's a work of art in that sense that it's left to the audience to decide. So who I am and who's real and who's a figment of whom is for the audience to decide. But for me, I had to make a choice, and, but I won't say what that is. But I mean, I come to Rome and I run into a bunch of people and we all have an unusual relationship. Okay, let me say what it is. Let me, it, it is at least a sense of a man who comes back. He goes and he finds that there is a, a young man named Jack. Uh, who reminds him of himself? It's the same. I think it's more likely I'm conjuring them. Yeah. It's hard for people to conjure their future, uh, so I'm conjuring my past and going back in the past to talk to a younger me, perhaps. Yeah. But there is at least that. Yeah. Well, I think yeah, I yeah. think there is that. But, but the point is that with, when you work with Woody, if you, uh, I don't want right. to break into my Woody impersonation, but you <laughs> say all that to Woody because you want to have some certainty when you're shooting and you just enjoy having these conversations. And literally, I think the most you get from Woody is you'd run by Woody what you think the movie's about, and Woody would go, uh, yeah. Sure, you know he would go. Okay, we'll go with that. You know yes, he's okay. never going to nail it down. But, but it doesn't matter. Uh, in other words, he. he there is you no make a vision. choice and you go with it. I made yeah. my choice and I went with it. That I'm going into the past. He basically says that's why I hired you to make choices. Perhaps. Uh, and and let's, the other vignette is yours. Who is Anna? Anna is a prostitute. Yes. Who is high working class in prostitute, by the way. High class. Well, <laughs> he takes her job very seriously. He's working in Rome. And this Italian couple that, that is, fr is from out of Rome, they go to Rome, they get separated, this couple, yeah. and then my character, Anna, ends up in the wrong room. With Antonio. And <laughs> has to pretend to be somebody else. Married uh, to. But she's, yes, and she's a very bad liar, and she yeah. says everything she thinks, and she causes a lot of trouble for this man. Yeah, and then she goes to a party. <laughs> she goes to a party and she finds all her clients. Because They're all she's there. very successful. Yeah, and they want to talk to her. And they want, they want to make appointments with her. And she's, yeah. she doesn't know because she doesn't have her agenda there. And she's very busy. And it's kind of wonderful. <laughs> a, a, a very good, a very talented prostitute who's a bad liar. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> when you think about it. It is, it is, it is very interesting. You want your prostitute <laughs> to be discreet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love her. Yeah, so, but how was the character for you? When you read the script, did you care or did you say, I get this. This is something I'd love. I got it and I loved it and I called him as soon as I read it and I said, of course I want to do this. And yeah. I, I suppose you had just liked it, didn't love it. Would you have still said yes because it's Woody? Yes, because I'm sure I would have found something. You know, I, 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 it's hard to believe that I would read a script from Woody and not love it because I'm like they are like, such a big fan of, of his work. All, mm. all my life, all the years that I remember since I discovered cinema, I've been watching his movies over and over again and, and really admiring his 
his writing and his work as an actor <coughs> and as a director, and I, I feel really lucky to be able to, mm. to, to have done this twice. You two play friends, yeah. Monica and who's Sally. The and Sally, Sally, right? Yeah. Sally and Monica. Who Sally, are the characters? The girl you cheat on. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's who I am. The girl you cheat yeah. on. Um, yeah. Who is Sally? She's a graduate student who's in. Um, who's in Rome and he's also a graduate student as well and um, I, 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 I mean uh, working with the, the like Alec and Ellen and Jesse are so great and what Ellen did I always thought of as Sally as a flip side of it she's like the opposite if um, because of course that's what would attract her boyfriend to the opposite of her which is very shiny and glimmery and kind of a liar and very exciting and um, I think my character was grounded and honest and not that interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and what about Ellen? What makes Ellen so interesting? She's very intelligent, but she doesn't have a depth of knowledge, but she knows how to spread it out and use it really well and manipulate the situation. You have a kind of grudging admiration for her. Oh, of course. And I think as a friend, she's an exciting friend to have, as long as her escapades are with people other than my boyfriend. And Monica? Um, I think you described her well, good, quite frankly. Oh. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I think, I mean, it's interesting when you're an actor and you're coming into playing a role like this, where it's someone who's uh, easy to judge and perhaps maybe demonized by certain people. And um, the most important thing was to not do that, you know? And uh, I, I, I saw this girl who was, yeah, perhaps being relatively manipulative in regards to the, uh, her, her, her utilize, utilization of like certain knowledge that doesn't maybe necessarily constitute some kind of like in, intellectual base, and, uh, and 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 in a way of of existing that perhaps lures people in, and whether that's to fill like her own emptiness and insecurity, perhaps I don't know. But right. let's take a look at the clip. This is a scene in which you, in which Sally tells Jack uh, that Monica you is coming to visit John you one against it. Here it is. Oh my gosh, uh, my friend, Monica, she called. She's going to be in Rome and I told her she could stay with us. Ah, well, so I'll finally get to meet her. She just broke up with her boyfriend, so she's a bit at loose ends. Trouble. Trouble in River City. What trouble? Why, why trouble? You're just gonna love her. She's smart and funny and interesting. Men just adore her. I think it's because of the sexual vibe that she gives off. Mm -hmm. And uh, how long is she coming for? Oh, I don't know. Between the breakup and then her acting career isn't going that well. Mm. Jesus Christ, can't you see the situation? It's fraught with peril. Oh, give me a break. Her friend is coming. What do I care? I'm not looking for anything. I'm perfectly happy with Sally. And uh, actually, judging from Sally's description, Monica's kind of like a neurotic, unpredictable type. Beautiful, funny, smart, sexual, and also neurotic. It's like filling an inside straight. Monica. Even her name is hot. <laughs> <laughs> so where's John coming from in this vignette? Well, you want to tell people that are younger not to make mistakes, you know, that you know, and you want them to <clears throat> leapfrog uh, certain things in life, and that they never can do that. But I want to say one thing, with I've just uh, not just to compliment her but you know with Woody because they shoot because you know Woody shoots so economically and, and he doesn't do a lot of coverage and we don't do a lot of takes and he's relying on everybody and everybody does show up you know really on the balls of their feet to work with him and be you know ready but there's an opportunity there and you can do if you if you deliver a take and an unbroken take and you speak and then she has this wonderful monologue in this piece where she describes this sexual encounter of hers and you and if you get the job done they don't cut you know, they just stay on you mm -hmm. and stay on you. And, this, and then when I saw it in Italy, I don't know if it's changed, there's a take on her that she just kills this. It's like it's like in a play. It, yeah. And it just right. holds on her and holds on her, and she just runs the ball the length of the field, you know, 100 yards. Yes. That's fantastic. It's really, she's really touchdown, wonderful. Wasn't it? Yeah, she was great. Yeah. So tell us about it. I mean, what, tell us about that scene, doing it, what, what, this whole monologue and, and going from... You, you know, knew you, you were going to steal focus the entire day. Did thing. you? You knew, you knew what you were doing. You knew. Please. 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 No, I, I don't think I've ever been more nervous or intimidated going into shooting a movie. And yeah. quite frankly, I, um, 
you know, when you're reading something that he's written and, and it has this natural rhythm to it that feels so organic and working with incredible actors and being surrounded by such wonderful people, I mean, I'm just doing my best to <laughs> embody someone and be present with it and hopefully it, yeah, it works and that's very kind of Alex, to say. Yeah, good. Uh, and, but it is nice to have that if you really nailed something. If you were doing it without Woody, there'd be tons of cover to take care of you. But the yeah. good thing also with Woody is that because everybody wants to work with him, such wonderful people show up. Yeah. And like when Woody calls you and says, come do the movie, you mm -hmm. know that the people you're going to go to work with that day, it's all these like amazing We're people. We're very lucky that way to oh, be yeah. able to get people of this caliber to work on our films. Uh, you know, we shoot not more than seven weeks. There's no rehearsal. Is those economic considerations or this simply uh, style? Partly style, but a lot economic. We, we operate on a very low budget, as all of these people can tell you. And um, we get very good people. And Woody is always fond of saying he hires the best people and lets them do their thing. So they're always good. Um, we can't afford to shoot for more than seven weeks. Now, what's the deal? Rome, the ci Italy, or the city of Rome knows that they would love to have Woody Allen a make a movie in their city, mm -hmm. b make a movie about their city, which their city is a character. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so they'll say, "What does a movie cost, and we'll pay for it?" Well, a, a, a specific company will do that, not the city. So it's a, it's a particular it's, company. Right. A particular from company will say, "We'll finance a movie if you will do it in Rome." Yeah. or other cities. Now, Rome happens to be a place that we were happy to go to, and it's very do beautiful. Do movies make money? The movies do. I, I always, you know, my job is finding the money for right. the movie. Yeah. And I, I always give people this, this pitch. You're not going to make a killing by investing in, in Woody's movie. You're not going to make hundreds of millions of dollars. It, we're just not in that same ballpark. But you are not going to lose money. What is your theory of the idea that, you know, people like different movies that Woody makes? And some love Vicky, and mm -hmm. then some people love the Paris movie, right. you know, but didn't like Matt, one of those mm -hmm. kinds of things. Um, and, and that's the nature of the market. Yes, that is the nature of the yeah, market. Right. But how does Woody see it? Does he see it simply, look, I do the best I can, and for somebody else to like it or not like it? Well, he comes up with an idea that he thinks is great and, and will, he will work. And then he does it to the best he possibly can. He is in charge of the entire thing, what you wear, what you say, um, the editing process, the everything. Music. Yes, he approves the posters, the trailers, the, all of it. Um, That's what we call a filmmaker. Yes, he hopes that people will like it. He can't help it if there's a group of people that don't like it. But he's not catering to what he thinks they want to see. He's Definitely catering to what not. he wants he to see. He feels you can never, you can never kind of think of what people are going to like. Does he, he never market test that. it or focus it or do never. any of that we, stuff? There's no market <laughs> testing. We don't believe no in market testing. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Can you imagine that? Right. <laughs> there's no notes. There's no there's market no testing. There's no... It's, you this know, is, I made my movie and they like it or not. Right. I'm off to Well, he my hopes project. that they like it. Yeah, it's not... You don't work Take hard to not it. have people like you. Right. Um, but you, you're you investing in Woody Allen. Because this, this Woody doesn't write until the money is secured. So I, I have to get the money by selling nothing. <laughs> so what does he do, do while he's I mean? waiting for you to raise the money? He goes oh, to Nick's games, he loves something. it. He goes to Nick's games, he writes The New Yorker. He playing music. We're playing music. We're doing a, uh, a musical of Bullets Over Broadway. Oh, yeah, I know. So he's always very busy. All right, take a look at another scene. This is your scene where you give the newly married Antonio Alexandra uh, Tiberi, right? Mm -hmm. Alessandro Tiberi. Yeah. Tiberi. Tiberi? Alessandro Tiberi. Tiberi. Okay, here's the scene. Uh, he plays Antonio. She plays the high-class hooker. Sua moglie era vergine quando vi siete sposati? Non sono affari tuoi. Scommetto di sì. Abbiamo fatto cose selvagge insieme. Che intendi tu per cose selvagge? Fare sesso con la luce accesa? Credimi, non, non era vergine. Io ero vergine. Tu hai veramente bisogno di una lezione. E eh, da chi? Non certo da te. E perché no? Tanto c'è tutto pagato. E gratis. C'è gente. Quando guardi questo, cosa vedi? Vedi due personaggi, ma guardi quando guardi a scena come questa? 
I'm terrible at watching myself. You You're know, watching I'm yourself always yourself. thinking like, what else I could have done? What else? No, 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 no. But that I'm not even gonna start talking about <laughs> that because that's <laughs> the most boring thing an actor can talk about. But I never go home feeling happy about what I did. Never. I watch it and I feel I love this movie and I'm so lucky to be in it. You know. I'm but 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 you're not necessarily thrilled by the, what you did, or you can think of a thousand things you might have done otherwise. Y yes, yeah. I'm thinking about the things out? I could have done differently. Do you think of it, or is it your life so I just think it's the purpose of a film is to be entertained, and I can never mm -hmm. be entertained by myself. <laughs> so I never watch my own films, <laughs> and I never go to the premiere if I can. I go to do the red carpet, I don't watch the film. I mean, I, just, I, mean, but I will watch films <clears throat> like this where it's an ensemble piece. You get it on DVD and just fast forward through your scenes mm -hmm. and watch the other scenes, you know. Okay, I want to see or show you a scene in, in which Jack is played by Jesse Eisenberg. You remember him from um, Social Network and Ellen, uh, in which they... Yes, here it is. How would you feel if I kissed you? Oh, um... That is a non-sequitur. Oh, a little miss shocked. Uh, didn't you see that two minutes ago? She popped the Tic Tac. What do you think that's about? I'm serious. I'm serious. What, what would you think? I would think that you're living with my best friend. Yeah, this is true. And yet, I can't stop myself. Oh, that's not good. Why? Why you didn't like it? No, I, I liked it, and that's what's not good. Woody also plays in one of the vignettes himself. Plays yes, he a, does. Comes he does. back and finds he a would-be opera star. And well, he goes to visit his daughter who's marrying an Italian, yeah. and they meet the parents. They yeah. meet the would-be in-laws, and he's not, he's not an opera star. Yeah. He's actually right. runs a mortuary, I believe. But he, uh, he does sing very well. In How does Woody make a decision as to whether he wants to put himself in the film? If there's a role that he can easily do, because he's not an actor like all of these people, so there's only... What he is, is he? Well, he has a limited range as an actor. Yeah, but I mean, does he think of himself as, a, as primarily a writer or primarily a, writer. a comedian? A writer. A writer. Definitely. Mm -hmm. That's where. Yes. First line of the obituary of Woody Allen will be writer. writer. If he wrote it himself. If he yes. wrote it himself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what would the first line of your obituary be if you wrote it yourself? If you wrote it yourself. One today. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know. I don't know. I couldn't answer that question. Hopefully, uh, um, I don't know. I'm getting married soon, so maybe mm -hmm. it would be a whole other life I might have now in my new life, you know. Maybe I'll have a child, kid. Maybe I'll have a kid. Maybe I'll have a kid who becomes, you know, something, yeah. you know, the father of, uh, you know, Robert Baldwin, who cured cancer. I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe all my identity will be as yet but, to be but determined. But are you are you at a point in your life now where you look at it as as you can see the evolution and you realize that Alec Baldwin now uh, is having the best professional opportunity of his time. Yet at the same time, no. how? Well, no, I mean, I mean, to me, it's like all uh, the, the idea of going out there and very aggressively, you know, this is, this is a business which has, for better or worse, there's some element of competition to it. Uh, I'll never forget Dustin Hoffman said to me, he goes, we're all in a line. Some of us are just in a shorter line yeah. in order to have accessing good material and getting scripts and parts and things like that. And I'm at this point now, I'm 54 years old. I'm coming out of the TV show that's ending this year. We'll be done with that after seven years. And, and for me, it's successful. <clears throat> it, we, it went well. We were very happy. But I, I, at my point in my life now is it's just not about that uh, determination and that kind of, uh, um, kind of white knuckling my career to get what I want. It's like, you know, whatever happens, happens, and I just want to be happy. And before, I was always like, you know, I gotta, if this movie doesn't do well, you'd see me walking out on the cliff, you know, <laughs> staring down at the edge of the cliff. The movie did bomb, it didn't make any oh. money. I'm gonna jump off the cliff onto the rocks <laughs> below. You know, it all mattered a lot more than yeah. it matters now. Now I'm just like, who cares? But, but what, when, when you have an incident like you did, is it because you get upset somebody's invading your privacy? Invading who you are. Oh, the guy tried to almost hit me yeah. with a camera. Yeah. What oh, happened yeah, yeah, yeah. to you? Oh, the guy was there was a person in front of me, and he was blocking him, and the guy lunged, and he almost hit me in the teeth with the lens of the camera. So I just pushed the guy away. But of course, they all make it like they, they all. Like, uh, my favorite line was John Malkovich, who says they all scream like they're uh, uh, um, uh, war. Uh, what did he call it? They were uh, war, like uh, political prisoners. He said. 
is that they all you mean scream the paparazzi. Like, yeah, is that they all scream like political prisoners. You know what I mean? Like because the other thing about it is I don't want to take our valuable time with this, but in this business in the modern era, all of us we make appointments with the press. This is an appointment with mm -hmm. the press. We make ourselves available as an obligation per our contract to our employers to represent the product and help to sell the product. Mm -hmm. And then when I walk out the door, that's over. I don't have, mm -hmm. when the guy jumps out of the bushes with a camera and tries to take a picture of my kid, mm -hmm. they want to say to you, well, here's another appointment you have with the press. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, this is a woman I who. Don't get me started <clears throat> on this because she and her husband are huge victims of this and yeah. you know, at home, correct? But I think it's good to talk about this. I do too. Yeah. I think it's good to talk about this because. This movie also talks about this subject it's of about fame. fame. Yeah. And the other day, Woody was saying a lot of interesting things about it. Like, it's, and you were not there in LA, but they asked him, and he was saying, okay, if you have to choose, the truth is, like, some of the advantages of being famous are great. Like, I get great tickets at basketball, great table at the restaurant, and, but, I mean, Woody has been in both, both sides of it. He's had, he's, he knows what, what it is. Mm. He knows how to deal with the difficulties of it, but, Somebody asked me, and I said, yeah, I agree with him that the, the, the advantages are very unfair, but the disadvantages are also extremely unfair. And I don't care if somebody takes my picture. But what Alec is saying is true. It has to be a mutual agreement. It isn't. Okay, I, I can deal with that when they are out, out there, they take my picture. But when it's about children, when there is not a law protecting the privacy of children, it drives me crazy. And until there is a law, like there is in many countries in Europe, there is nothing you can do. You can complain about it, but there has to be a law to protect the children so that those children can go to school and can be one more in the class. They don't have to be the daughter of the son of so and so, because it just, it really changes the dynamic. Don't you think? Yeah, I think so. So I it's, mean, it's a, compounded it's a, when it's you're a, a famous couple too. I mean, you yeah. and your husband are both very famous. It's a, like that's like exponential for them. You know, they. No, you had yeah. that experience too. <clears throat> yeah, once upon a time I did. Yeah, that's terrible. But but I think just to to, to finish that, that that is that, you know, I love doing this kind of stuff under the right circumstances. You know, this is a joy to be in a group with people, and it's more it's different. And you go and do Letterman. You know, we all have our favorites, and we all do have the ones we like to do more than others. But this thing in the public, it's just it's tough because uh, the, the, the 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 press and this instant social network. Work Twitter age we live in, people think you know that I'm you know, out there just decking photographers willy nilly. <laughs> that nothing could be further from the truth. I mean, I'm in front of a courthouse. The place is crawling with cops. This is where you get. If the, I was you slugging get your marriage license, if I'm slugging a photographer out in front of the courthouse, I mean that. Would, I mean, I, I mean, I'm dumb, but I'm not that dumb. There must have been ten cops like right there on the block, you know. But uh, but they do. Th this is a guy who'd baited me before. He camped out in front of my house. They've done this before. So what's all? I was stalked recently by a woman. It, it does. You, you ignore it. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you a story, and I'll, I'll just end with this. You, you ignore this. Many, many years ago, I was friends with a guy, an actor, who he was dating in its infancy. It was the earliest part of his relationship with Rebecca Schaefer. He dated Rebecca Schaefer, who got shot in the doorway of her apartment mm -hmm. by a stalker. So we ignore this stuff, and we minimize these invasions in our lives until one day it's not uh, advisable. You know, you, so sometimes I do draw the line myself, you know what I mean? I say to somebody, <clears throat> put that camera down or, you know, we're going to have... Do you think more that they know it may make you angry, the more likely they want to do well, it? Well, they try to bait you. That's the Sean Penn syndrome. When they come after you and they know you're going to take the bait, they come after you. And then I mean, eventually you don't. I mean, I didn't. This guy said that I hit him with my fist. That's uh, absolutely untrue. But, 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 but the point is, is that uh, you, you, you have to understand that, that uh, I mean, look, when I do these things, the legitimate press, and I'm forced to make my own determination about this, the legitimate press, I respect them, and I, w I can't wait to do these kinds of things. I want to help sell the movie, especially with somebody exactly. like Woody. Yeah. And it's then when I consider the, when I consider yeah, I want to believe you come here because you like the show, not because <laughs> it's just your well, job. Well, no, 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 meaning no. In, a world, in a world where we have a job to do, these are the ones we like to do, and some of you like to do a little bit less. But then there's these illegitimate people where, to me, these people need all to be, you know, uh, uh, you know, deported to some island where they just... Uh, <laughs> was it that you tweeted about this? I don't remember. No, uh, something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I tweeted a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. you know, just one last moment about this. It, it's one thing about you. It's also about your kid, too. I mean, the protecting them. That's no, true. And it's very easy to hear somebody complain about this, you know, and the way the world is right now, and to hear some actor or singer complain about it, say, like, it's what are you complaining about? And I understand that. Yeah. But I'm not, I never complain about it for myself. But I've seen it, you know, with many children or friends that, that do the same job. 
And when it's about children, this is not a game. This is a serious thing. This is this. I mean, that law exists in so many other places. There is a reason for that, but not here. And and you think you need more protection here? It's it, it's obvious. I think it's I not it's, it's not it's not something privacy. something uh, great to ask for. It's just like basic needs that that a human being needs. But they want a picture you know? of you. They, like for example, I live here. She lives in Europe. And, 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 we're, and we're here, and they might have follow you around. And what's unusual is tomorrow we have a red carpet for Woody's movie. They can take all the pictures of her they want to, or, or whoever, tomorrow. I mean, we, we're there And you'll by talk to them and do Q&A yeah, on the red carpet. We're there by appointment tomorrow, but they, yet they have Sorry, to kind they, of follow you around all day and harass you. Anyway. We do these like 10 days in a row, and we do press for every single country. And we are very happy to do it because we want to support the movie. And, and yeah, of course, I love your show, but this is part of our job. <laughs> yeah. And there are many other shows that maybe I don't love, but I want to do it because we have to sell the movie. And this is part of our job. Then you have to have a few hours in the day that are just for you and for your family. And again, when you especially when it's yes. about children. And we only want to talk about yeah. this. No, yes, can I ask you a question? Is this your lucky table? Did you have this? Have you had this table? Has it always been the same table? Yes. This is, this is the same? This is it. From day yeah. one. It's yes. the lucky table. I yes. love this table. Everybody. It's interesting. And then no marks on it. All we do is tighten it up. But you yeah. just could have been talking about the Roberto Benigni section. Well, so I, I, I actually together. was going to come to that. What's the theme of all these four vignettes? And, and what one part of this, or all of it, is about what they've just been talking about? The price, the, both the joy, the, 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 all that good comes from fame, and yet at the same time... Right. Uh, I think the Benigni piece makes a real statement about the nature of... This is Roberto Benigni who plays one of the vignettes. Yes. Uh, makes a real statement about our times and the publicity and and how uh, they follow him around and watch him shave and the most unimportant thing it's kind of like the Paris Hilton syndrome yeah. of uh, stardom that kind of thing so and that that one thing that one piece of the film that one vignette uh, makes a very I think a very important statement about what's going on uh, have you begun to experience all this as sort of I don't. You know. I don't at all. Be, but I'm very like I'm. I, I I'm low. low no, I was going to say low rent. That makes me no, sound like a not. problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not low rent. I mean, this is high rent and you're low rent. But I, I think I think the most I ever get is people saying, you know, enjoyed I thought, your performance. I thought, yeah, they enjoyed my performance. So like the manicurist is like. A, <laughs> but but I but I think the 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 interesting thing about the Roberto Benigni piece and that like is I think it makes a commentary that like fame has no qualitative value. Like it you. There used to be a correlation to achievement, and now you, there is a certain type of fame that has no correlation to achievement. It's just fame yes. for fame's yes, sake, right. and there are and people it's who are not famous for being famous. Yeah, and I remember when I wanted to be an actor, or like I wanted to be successful, like you know you all do, and my mom was like. Woody, anybody can be famous. Just try to like just do something crazy if that's all you want. But if you want to achieve something, then like He's that's good. a different thing. Yeah. But another aspect of that also is that with this social media and Twitter, which is so instantaneous to me, is that is that you have people who like if you're outspoken politically, let's just say, <laughs> let's just say you have a lot of political opinions, <laughs> and you're and political. Let's say, let's say for sake of argument, you don't mind expressing. And you're very vocal about your political advocacy, and you have your political opposition, and the, and they get on the the internet, and all of a sudden within. 30 minutes the 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 misrepresentation of the story is out there you know by your political opponents you go on Twitter so you know Fox Nation says Baldwin punches photographer not true and and, and that's the, the thing that I find is the most difficult because in the world we live in where our reputations are a component of what we do I mean there's your your, your work and your craft and your dedication whatever there's uh, uh, your your reputation is a part of what you do. We're no different than other people, which is to be wrongly accused of something is one of the most painful things you can deal with. For someone to say something about you that isn't true, and to disseminate something far and wide about you that isn't true, and that's a big struggle today in the age of the internet and everything to combat people who sit there and say, you know, Joe Blow did this, and Joe Blow's guilty of this, and they say things about you, and it spreads like a wildfire, and b before you know it, I mean, I I'll walk down the street right. and have something happen, and I'll walk in the door, I, I mean, I'm not kidding, and this is like a Woody Allen movie, <laughs> you walk in the door, I'd love Woody to do a movie about the internet and about social media, because you walk in the door, and my doorman would look at me and go, 
I'm awful sorry, Mr. Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, he already knows. Oh, I read, read on the internet there that you, uh, you know, had that, uh, you know, with that, uh, whatever. You had that thing with that guy down in the, you know. He punched this guy out. Yeah, you, uh, you know, clocked that guy down by the courthouse. I'm very smart, Mr. Bowen. Not very smart. But, you know, cops everywhere, courthouse. You might have waited until you got a couple blocks away. Or behind a hot dog stand, maybe. You know, like you, you, you listen to these guys and you're like, what the hell? I mean, well, you know, uh, the, the UPS guy's getting out of the truck. Mr. Bowen, not too smart. <laughs> it's like that. It's it's like, right. Oh, my God. Yeah. But also, once something's on the Internet, it's there forever. Forever. Yes. Yeah. It, you can never okay. eliminate it. Once something's on there, it's a very it's different, in stone. very different world. Yeah. Very different. But do you think this will never change? I mean, we, she, Penelope can talk about uh, laws that are in Europe and not here. But I mean, uh, is it just getting more intense because of instant communication? Because how does that play for you? Yeah. Uh, you have fans. I was a fan of yours, and I molested you on a plane that time, remember? Oh, <laughs> well, my daughter, I, I came up to a plane, I was like, my God. No, 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 Not too smart, Mr. Bowen. Oh. Molestation, you know, it's bad. <laughs> well, I did a story with a plane that time, and I was like, yeah. oh, my God, no, my was, daughter I loved you. I was a huge fan of yours, and that was such a nice conversation. But, yeah, I mean, it was, like, <clears throat> the interesting thing, I think, is, like, the immediacy of going through the transition of having people not know who you are and being 20 and then having this weird little indie movie you did have this very um, unexpected response and then all of a sudden you're 20 and I you know always look I'm 25 now I always look younger than I am and I'm tiny and all of a sudden it's like there's like big men like chasing you and yelling at you and like you know chasing you in your car and it's like I get it it's like a it's like a part of my job and it's like a part of just what happens and um you know, I I wanted to be an actor, and I, you know what I mean. But um, it was an interesting experience to, or to be like staying at a friend's house in L.A. before I lived there, and and you know have people follow you there and not realize it, and mm -hmm. and, and 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 sort of like learning how to just how one learns to adapt to to that. Um, uh, but I think there's also ways um, where I think it's probably harder for you to to control um, or having children or or you know being with the, your your husband and, and 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 how much more that makes it much more intense um, you know I'm just like boring and I don't go out uh, a lot yeah, and right. like don't you know what I mean I think there's things that can um, that attract it as well but um, yeah, Alec is right though if you're a couple even more so because I remember how many thousand times people would ask about you know, are they getting married? Are they not getting married? No, no, Is but I think it's enough with one of them having this job. It doesn't have to be the two people in the relationship. Even with matter. one, even with one of them, mm -hmm. it's like you know, and yeah. and now there is this 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 trend of you know, like every magazine has like a few pages reserved for babies of so and so. And I always say they are not handbags, so don't uh, you know? It's, They're not it's, handbags, are they? It's, yeah, it's, right. it's really crazy. Mm. But I do think all of this has to change because I think it's going to explode because I think people are realizing the information uh, communication, like the news, have no credibility anymore. Like people are slowly realizing, like you are, even if you're gonna read not just about a movie, about actors, about politics, it's like yeah. it's like I don't know anymore, uh, anymore to know. Where to go to to know what what's the truth? You or know, just better boundaries. Cause well, the but idea I mean, I know. Let me. Those kids you know. being her, you know, harassed and traumatizing. Like that can't be easy when you're really little. And this is like an invasive thing that. It's, it's I, important. If I was a it parent, is important to say that there. I mean, that there are people who take the news serious. And Woody writes for the New Yorker magazine. New Yorker magazine takes it seriously. This program takes it seriously. Uh, CBS News takes it seriously. There are a lot of places that take news. But and it's not and even the same. No, 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 no. Of course, uh, we. No, no, of us. No, 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 of us are putting you or. Woody's writing or the serious press in the same category of, of the guy that decides to chase a three-year-old in the street. Right. We're aware None of, of us. N the difference, I mean, you cannot even put it in the same sentence. I want to just ask one important There's question, which is uh, my wife-to-be was raised in Spain, 
and would love to go back to Spain. And I was going to say, would you and Javier like to hire me as your head of security over there in Spain? <laughs> I could go there and I I'd have a job would be with a you. Very I think I could decision. be very helpful to you. Because apparently a ton of people left right now. That's like all I'm reading. How do you say not too smart, Mr. Baldwin, in Spanish? <laughs> no muy inteligente. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we have the doorman in Madrid coming after me. God. <laughs> But but please, I hope you know we are not generalizing. I do. Like I there do. is, it's a completely find... completely different world. There is yeah. the serious press, which I have a lot of admiration for, and then there is the other thing that I don't know what name to give it. It's just I don't call that it's press. That's something you get, else. You get a list of people, of magazines. The old story is you don't do the magazines that much unless you're safe because they're going to edit you. Right. How many times have I done a magazine story for, for professor years ago when I used to star on films more, and the guy would be sitting there, and no matter what I'd say, I could say the most banal thing. I'd say, well, you know, I work with Ellen, and I love working with Ellen, and the guy would be there, and he'd go, uh-huh. <laughs> like he's just sizing, and click, 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 click. He's getting ready to, he's loading up for how he's going to depict you. With it. You do TV with someone, there's no editing. It's me and you, and we talk. And in that world, I'm not just saying this for your benefit, there's people who are preferred. You know you're going to have an intelligent conversation. It's going to be constructive this show you people admire you they love you and they and and there's a there's a group you do and there's a group you endure <laughs> you have to go do that well, the idea is um it is part of our time i mean this is a, mm -hmm. it is part uh, of our time and this is part of the themes i mean um, woody i'd love for woody to listen to this conversation and say aha there's an interesting movie to make uh, because he brings not only his personal experience with it mm -hmm. you know but he also brings the power of his own observation to it you know Yes, I think that's true. His own personal experience. You know, whenever there's a movie out, there's someone who writes that that movie is his own personal experience. Right. No matter how different the film is, that, that that's what they hone in on. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's preordained that they say that. But yes, well, I think the, the Roberto Benigni part does speak to that. that. It's a, yes. it's the it does speak to it's a the look press. At fame. I don't. I don't think that things will go back to the way they were. Things never go backwards. No, you know, they things won't go never back, go backwards. But it will be something else. I mean, hopefully. Maybe. I don't think they will go back. I, I, no. I always think I belong to another era because I <laughs> don't. Twitter and this and that. And it's just not. I'm not made for this. <laughs> Refuse to. Spain, definitely. <laughs> Meet your new head of security. <laughs> Is Penelope home? <laughs> Who wants to know? <laughs> um, let me just talk a bit more about the themes of this movie. There's always a sense of, of sexuality and sex and, and our interest in the other sex. Mm hmm there are there, yes what else is he getting at here in, in, in the, the different vignettes um, well the most fleshed out one is the one that Alex yeah. in the you know and um, the man of middle age looks at the youngest looks, he looks at his life and and why does he feel compelled to 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 <coughs> admonish the character why does your John feel like he's got to admonish well, I mean, Jack and, I, and say this is what I've learned Buster well, I think like any good film, I mean, especially with somebody who's as smart a writer and as accomplished a writer as Woody, there's a drama that could be made from the same script almost. You could have a, you could have a movie in which the John character goes back in time and visits his younger self and, <clears throat> and, and, and getting away from the, the, uh, and detouring from the comic purposes speaks only to the, to the Jack character in a very dramatic way. I could sit down with him and, and you could be having literally this, this one-on-one, -on -one, this tete-a-tete, uh, with your younger self and talking to him and trying to get him to, again, pole vault over all this uh, problems in his life. But again, it is a comedy, so he has me speak to them as well, which was interesting. I mean, I actually talk to them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, because it's, it's supposed to be funny, but I think that uh, Woody, uh, uh, I mean, Woody, I, and I'm not saying this to be some kind of, you know, uh, uh, ham-fisted compliment, but, you know, Woody's like Shakespeare in that way, where sex and the element of sex and the element of uh, sexual relations between men of whatever age yeah. and pe people of whatever age uh, throughout life, young, old, whatever, that's the, the main meat of the whole thing, relationships, right. which, which sex is just a part of it. But like Shakespeare, I could think that's the through line of most of what Woody does, which people can't get enough of. Yeah, and, and where his power is the through line of everything Shakespeare does. Yeah. Yeah. Right, but the, the, the piece that Penelope's in and even yeah. the one, the vignette that Woody's in, I think are just pure fun. 
Right. You know, like a good idea that's that's With funny. a character we love. Yes, just yeah. fun, um, a good idea and, and well executed and, you know, without any deep underlying important meaning. Now, was there some sense of great fun to play this character? I mean, was Anna a character that you wanted to say, watch me? So much watch fun. Watch me. No, so much fun because I read so much when I, I, I laughed so much when I read it, and I didn't read the other three stories, and when I saw the movie, I could not stop laughing because there are some things in this, in this movie. Like, to me, the guy that I can only sing in the shower is one of the funniest yeah. things in Woody's world, you know, to me. This is the character that Woody comes over Woody and is going to make a star. Beat, yes. It's like when you always remember with time, like the guy out of focus and the blind director, yeah, and right. this, and yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. to me, the, the guy that only sings in the shower, it's one of those one of those uh, characters and I, I, I laughed so hard. The movie is really funny and I love playing it because this character doesn't doesn't have a filter, doesn't think what she's gonna say or do. She's just like a like a child that way. She's totally free and it's so liberating to play somebody like that that is uh, the opposite from being a freak control and I'm not yeah, calling like myself a freak character. control but... Uh, Don't what? we Alec? Don't we like people like this that are free? I love the incautious prostitute. I mean, that's one of my favorite characters. I just love it. So, so what is Osmandius Melancholia? Mm -hmm. What is that? What From, is it? Yeah. You mean the, the King of Kings? In the Kings? context, yes. In the context of all this. Oh, in the context of the film? Yeah. It comes from the poem, does it not? It co yes. Um, but it, did Woody talk about this? Is this song, Woody had this in mind? Woody no, no. I... I I don't think so. I, you know, very often we get letters or emails from people that say, "Oh, I'm writing a paper on such and such a film," oh, and, yeah, and they read something and into it, and it's, it's some deep psychological meaning that you know he never even thought of. Um, so I think the same thing happens here. I think this the movie is fun. Yeah. It's funny. It's great. But this is about their vignette, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Tell me what it's about. Well, uh, Woody was asked the other day, so I guess I'll just uh, sort of like reiterate what I heard him say. Right. But he, his his basic thing was sort of this, you know, melancholy and this sense of like sad nostalgia that you get when you look at uh, essentially beautiful works of art or beautiful work by right. Yes, uh, go ahead. Yeah, by um by that. No matter how profound the beauty of something is, it's um not going to last. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and I guess it's a reflection on impermanence in general. And in, in cities as well as lives. I, I'm sure yeah. we could make the connection, sure. And then, the, you know, the <coughs> emptiness that creates for probably, yeah. I'm right. sure, well, every human being the on the planet. That you, that <laughs> the the uh, Villa right. Cantili that we right. shot in was spectacular and there was a lot to be said. You know, they had a lot left that they could flesh out who lived where and what kind of life they had there. It's right outside the city of Rome. But when you go back now, all you really see are spectacularly beautiful shapes. And, and, and that's... But there's also the notion that everything changes. I mean, I mean that everything really, does change. Everything ages and changes, yes. and, you know, and, and you have to accept and live with that right. idea. Right, and not always for the better. And not, and not always for the better. You know? mm -hmm. and, and that... Oh, goodness, everything's happening. Oh, I, I, I was going to say, oh. I was going to say, uh, when we were in Rome, I took a side trip to Florence, and I'd never been to see, I'd never been to the Uffizi, and I'd never seen the Davis, David, and yeah. when I saw the David, I stood in front of it, and I cried, because I, I and then I realized while I was crying that I was the kind of character that Woody Allen would make fun of <laughs> in a movie, because I'm getting so emotional in front of this statue. Um, but I, it was a very pure experience that I then undercut by my own neuroses. You just wrote yourself your next part in a Woody Allen movie. Yeah! <laughs> that was great. Now, this is also, to roam with love, mm -hmm. it, I assume is in part Woody's homage to... Fellini and yes, you Italian know, he, filmmakers. Yes, he, he was always a fan of Italian filmmakers. Thought they were the greatest. Cinematographers were the greatest. Um, so it does have that element to it, absolutely. What's the next film? The next film we are shooting in San Francisco and New York. It has no title. Yes. We does have, it have a cast? It has Kate Blanchett, Sally Hawkins. Alec Go Baldwin. Go back for the third time, sir. Alec Baldwin. Oh, that's me <laughs> Andrew Dice Clay. 
Uh, Andrew Dice Clay. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, right? That's right. That's yes. Playing himself or a no, character no, like no, himself? No, no, no. As an actor, yeah. I mean, the thing Woody always says, and, and it's, it's always true, and it's true, it is that for all the great affection he has for everything, for Paris mm -hmm. or for London or for Rome mm -hmm. or for Madrid, uh, he is to the bone a New Yorker. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, what he has said before, mm -hmm. he didn't need a, a spread in Long Island because he was very happy just to mm -hmm. stay in Manhattan during the hottest yes. day in summer. Absolutely. Because the love affair with this city, mm -hmm. you know, transcended any sort of love affair for geography he would ever have. Yes, that's absolutely true. And he does love other cities, but there's nothing like New York for him. Thank you for coming. Oh, thank Great you for having thank me. You. Great to have you thank here. You. Thank, thank you very much. You.